got drafted at Dell Diamond, which is our AAA affiliate now. Uh, we were playing in the state semis, and I got drafted like during the game in the third inning. Coming from the third inning, I'm looking on like the concourse area, and I, like I know where my family is sitting. They're all like cheering and, and hugging each other. I was like, oh god, something happened. One of my buddies like goes up and he's like obviously getting some information relayed to him and he was like oh my god what and he comes down and tells me he's like boys you got dropped by the park because the houston astros announced the signing of their first round pick forrest whitley out of san antonio alamo heights high school first of all forrest congratulations i know this has been a crazy week but you actually got drafted in the middle of pitching in a state semifinal game at the dell diamond how distracting how crazy was that yeah it was kind of an interesting situation how that all that all came to be but I was so locked in on the game, but I was also kind of focused on like a pretty life-changing scenario. So he was, and I was just like, oh, sick. Those were like my exact words. I was like, oh, sick. After the game was absolute chaos and Twitter was getting blown up, phone was blown up. When I got drafted by him, like I literally had no clue that like their development was like, e like among like elite, elite company. So I was just like, oh, whatever. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go, I guess. <laughs> and then it ended up being like best case scenario, like closest to like all my family, uh, obviously like elite development, like I said. Yeah, I mean, I honestly couldn't be in a better spot. Yeah, I want to throw righties change ups too, especially Joe Adele. The tall outfielder, or third baseman, I think. Yeah, he, he struggled with the cutter, net, cutter end last night. Yeah, excited about today? Yeah, volley games are kind of weird. Like, it's hard to get pumped up from because you're throwing in front of 10 people. But, like, you know the lineups are, like, elite, especially this one here. Um, so, you know, once you get out there, you're good. But before, like, it's kind of hard to walk in there. <laughs> Dude, honestly, like, I've bounced around through, like, a lot of, like, mental processes before. And what I've found out works for me the best is to treat it just like any other day. Like, I don't do, like, anything special. Like, I don't, like, lock in any special way. Like, I brought this big speaker here for everybody here because they had, like, asked me. Um, but, like, I don't have to, like, really focus. Like, if somebody's, like, talking to me outside the locker room, like, or before I head out, like, I'll have a conversation with them. I don't need to, like, have complete solitude. As normal as I can be is like the best thing for me. I'm a lot happier out there and I can be myself more when I just like in myself throughout the whole day. Cause like being like super locked in and like, ex like excluding myself from everybody else, that's not me. I like to like have conversation, kind of like shoot the shit with everybody like all hours of the day before we start. A lot of people thought I was going to play football, do the football thing. It's in your blood. It's in your bloodline. Your brothers are doing it. Don't be dumb. It was almost like football was the only way out. Football was the only way to get to where you wanted to go. And I just, I just didn't agree with that. I mean, I wanted to go out of high school from the minute I started playing uh, my freshman year when I figured out that that was a possibility. I wanted to be a guy that saw his name get called off the board, forego college and ultimately start his career. I don't want to play any other sport. I don't see myself playing any other sport. I want to be under the lights in the big leagues, in the historic parks, the fans, the situations, everything. Baseball was it. Once I decided that I was going to have a, a little bit different road than my brothers, it was then to put the next parts of the puzzle together and the, the plan forward to make sure that that happened. Ultimately, I didn't want my mom to pay for school. So I knew that if I couldn't get full from these schools for baseball, I'd have to play football because I didn't want a dime coming out of a pocket for education. She deserves the world. And ultimately, that's what drives me. I actually never really expected to play a senior season. Of all the 30 organizations, I had done paperwork for all but I think the Nationals. And I didn't understand the draft process. It wasn't really laid out to me all that well. So I thought since all these teams had reached out to me and were somewhat interested, um, that you know someone would take me. That off season, I was going back to Seattle for like a week to get ready to go report to whatever team drafted me. Those last two days of the draft were pretty, pretty miserable days. Probably one of the, some of the lowest days of my career, honestly. It was like a lonely process. I mean, you, 
you expect your phone to go off at any minute and it never, nobody, it never rings. Um, you sit there, refresh Twitter over and over again, each pick every 30 seconds. You, you, you know, just praying your name gets called and then as the day goes, it, it gets like gloomier and gloomier. I just kind of had to swallow my pride. I remember I actually showed up in like the 30th round of the, of the third day um, to driveline to train for the day. And about 20 minutes prior, my like one of my best friends, Christian Meister, had just gotten drafted. So like I was so happy for him, but at the same, like selfishly, it was like it was just crummy because you know I, I thought I thought I had done enough or I was good enough to play. And looking back now, it was one of the best things that ever happened to me was not getting drafted because I, I don't believe I'd be in baseball still if I would have got drafted at 21. But in in that moment, at that time, it was everything. That kind of just fueled the fire. I mean, it was one of the days that um, I'll look back on and I know changed my career for the best. You know, once I got to Georgia State, my dream was just to get drafted. Kind of overworked myself. Um, my diet wasn't very good. Um, I was, you know, going out and drinking quite a bit. That was kind of like par for course, like, you know, pitch on Friday, go go out. We went out again, and then I was out till 4 a.m. again, and then I had a lift that Sunday morning at 7 a.m. In like 48 hours, I got like four or five hours of sleep. But then Tuesday, we were playing Mercer, so every scout in Georgia was there. The Ranger scout actually wasn't gonna be able to make my start on Friday, so he wanted to see my midweek bullpen, so we orchestrated that. He even said like, hey man, like take it easy. Like I'm literally just here to like see how you move. Didn't take his advice, just started letting it rip. Um, you know, kind of wanted to show him my best stuff. Typically in those midweek bullpens, um, still kind of hung over from the weekend, like body still recovering. I'd take it pretty easy. In that particular one, I didn't. I threw a pitch, it was a curveball. Felt funny, it's like, it, it's like a sensation that I've never felt before, hopefully I never feel again. Like almost like someone's like stabbing your elbow, but it's like really quick. When you throw the ball, it's that same sharp pain, but when you release the ball, like your hand feels like really clumsy. It's like you like have never thrown a baseball before. And like I skipped like a ball, like probably like 80 miles an hour, like 50 feet. And I like put my like glove over my mouth and like whispered, like said to my pigeon coach, like, hey, like something's up. Like I just hurt my elbow. And so we shut down the bullpen. Then we played the game against Mercer. I iced it for like a portion of that game and then just like took the ice off. It's like, I don't know. It's like, it's good. Like no problems. I even remember after icing, I was so, you know, I was just an idiot. I just like grabbed a ball and just started tossing it. It's like, I don't know, it feels good. So I, I had like no concern. And I remember calling my dad and telling him like, hey, just want to let you know, like kind of tweaked my elbow in the bullpen today, but like there's a good chance I'm not going to start on Friday. But you know, like literally low concern, like, and I meant it. But that morning that I woke up, that Wednesday morning, I like, my arm was like completely locked out. Like I was in a cast, could not extend it. And like, that's when I knew. And then eight days after that, I had Tommy John surgery. All right, let's go, let's go inside for sure. Yeah, it really sucked because I was not there like when he initially blew out. Yeah, so I was still in school and like I knew that the earliest I could get there was June. So it's kind of like, you know, I can only do so much from being so far away. Like obviously emotionally support him, but like physically when he can't do anything for the first week, I was like, you know, I wish I could be there. Luckily, I think your dad went yeah, there. Yeah, my dad came. Wow. I always tell him like, his ambition is like the best thing about him. You knew that something good was gonna come out of this, no matter how bad the situation was. I remember like that fall, like joking with one of my teammates, like, oh man, if I blow out, like I'm just hanging it up. Like, that's it, you know, 22 years old and you know, never had a professional opportunity. Like, it's just, it'll be it for me. And then like, when I actually blew out, there was like no questions. I was getting the surgery and gonna keep going. So like, if I was gonna do it, like I had to, I had to like put everything into it. Cause it, there's a lot of bullshit that comes with like 
being a baseball player, but there's nothing that beats like getting up on the mound and, and pitching. I cut out as much fast food as I could, started to kind of cook for myself, eat better. I stopped drinking completely, pretty much cold turkey, and then kind of recommitted myself to the weight room. You know, I'm like not like a big, strong guy, but I got like functionally strong, like, it, you know, it works for me. The plan for at Georgia State was to rehab my elbow in eight to nine months and then start me on the opening Friday night of the following season. All the research had shown me that like 15 to 18 months is the threshold you want to kind of come back in for Tommy John. And if I were to do that at Georgia State, I would miss my entire se uh, fifth year senior season and it wouldn't work out. So it just didn't align for both parties in my head. Informed the coaches that I wasn't gonna come back for my senior season and I was gonna just train at driveline up in Seattle, move back home and get after it there and just try to come back as a like a free agent as like a 24 year old or 23, 24 year old and just like hold like a scout day up in Seattle and just see what I could do.